It's Monday. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And today is day four of the Read With You Challenge. And to be perfectly honest, it's probably supposed to be day five. But you know, yesterday was Sunday. And some days, superheroes must rest, yeah? So here we are again um, for reading for five minutes. Ooh, I didn't set my timer. I always forget to set the timer. Um, but where we were last time reading The Forge of the Forest is we were reading about King Forkbeard. Um, and like in my head, I know that King Forkbeard is probably some guy with a beard that has two separate lobes in it so that, um, you know, it looks forked. But also I have this lovely mental image where King Forkbeard is a guy who just has forks for a beard. And I know that that is absurd and ridiculous, but you know, feels, feels good in my head to think about it that way. <laughs> it's a good visual. So, um, yeah, we just met King Forkbeard and he's somebody, I guess we're a little bit afraid of. Um, you know, he's doing some things that are making people, uh, afraid so let's dive back in and and see where this goes so let's start the timer here we go five minutes and as he stays there with his kettle of fire burning low there are some in our land who say a good word for king forkbeard indeed there are some who mention his name with the names of the heroes who have saved the land and they who mention his name in this way tell this story about the gift that King Forkbeard gave. Ooh, somehow a good guy. They tell of a maiden to whom he gave a scarf. And this scarf was such that wherever it was spread, fire came. The maiden to whom it was given was named Ortrud. And when her father died, Ortrud was made ruler of our land. A lord who came from across the sea married Ortrud, the ruler of our land. He married her, vowing that he would br bring no soldiers from across the sea into our country and have no arms that the council of our people did not know of. So Ortrud ruled our land, and the lord whom she had married was by her side. And in those days, King Forkbeard slept, and the fire from his kettle was hardly to be seen. Ortrud was happy with her lord, and the people who thought that all oaths were being kept were happy with their ruler. All was well and very well with the land and the soldiers that we had were hardly in the hundreds. It happened that Ortrud was one day spinning in a high room in the great house of the rulers of the land. Her maidens were around her spinning and singing a song that had in it words about the sleep of King Forkbeard. The spindle that Ortrud had fell from her hand. It rolled away and it fell down through a crack that was in the floor. She went and she looked down through the crack that the spindle had fallen through. And she saw men in the wide chamber below, men standing silently in the half darkness with arms in their hands. Then Ortrud knew that the oaths that her husband had sworn had been broken and that he had brought into the country armed men who could overthrow it and enslave it. She did not cry out as she looked down and saw the soldiers standing stiffly there, stiffly there, under the roof of the rulers of the land. She rose up, and she left her maidens, and she went to where her husband was pacing up and down in his chamber. She looked straight into his eyes, but he did not look straight into hers. He did not speak to her. She did not speak to him. She went back to where her maidens were, and she whispered to them, and they rose up and went out of the high room, and left the great house, and all those whom they found and spoke to left the great house also. Then Ortrud went to her own chamber, where many sacred things were, and she took the scarf that King Forkbeard had given her. She left it down on the floor of the great house, and she went outside and joined her maidens and those who had gone out of the house. Her maidens had brought their spindles, and she sat amongst them and had, got, and had them go on with their spinning. 
But now fire came upon the great house and the redness of burning. The fire that was from the scarf King Forkbeard had given broke out from the walls and leaped up to the very roof. And the thousand starlings that had just come to nestle along the eaves flew into a cloud of smoke. Then men came up from beneath the flooring of the great house, cutting their way through the timbers with their axes and great swords, and throwing off their armor that was hot upon them, and throwing down their weapons that were hot within their hands. They came up, crying out in terror, and they fled away. And the husband of Ortrude came out of the great house, and the light of the burning was upon his face, making it seem all crooked. He and the men he had brought into the country fled down to the sea, and they took to their ships, and they sailed away from the land. And so Ortrude was left alone, and the great house that she had lived in as a ruler was left there, standing blackened and broken as a monument to the great deed that was hers when she spread the scarf that was King Forkbeard's upon the floor of the house, and saved the land from the armed men who would have overthrown it. Mm. And so it comes that when our people speak of those who saved the land in the old days, they speak of old King Forkbeard who gave the scarf that Orchard spread again of, upon the floor, bringing the fire that routed those armed men. They speak kindly of King Forkbeard, although he has just come down from his hill and narrowed the corn lands and the grazing fields upon us. I have been there. Ooh, there's the timer. Let me finish. I have been there when he has gone by upon his red horse, but not always does he have his horse wet its hoofs in the sea. The woman in the sky sometimes pours down a flood that makes his horse halt. The people say that she, like Ortrud, lets her spindle fall down, and sometimes when she looks to where it has fallen, she sees King Forkbeard riding upon his red horse. She halts them then before the horse has wet its hoofs in the sea. All right, that's the end of King Forkbeard. So that was also the end of my five minutes. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and yeah, let me know what you're reading using the hashtag read with me challenge or Insta book club. And yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye.